Today we're talking about PVDF, how the demand has shifted over the last couple of years, supply chain issues, and how it's affecting the architectural metal markets. In support of our mission to bring you the most up-to-date news on what's going on in the industry, we filmed this video about PBDF market updates and just a few days later, we received word from our paint supplier that all metal roofing manufacturers are now on allocation with PDF products. So Adam, can you tell us what that means before we jump into the rest of the sure. video? Sure, it, it, it's not just metal roof manufacturers. I think it's really any consumer of PVDF products. I mean, there's extruders, there's metal roof manufacturers, there's siding manufacturers, things like that. So I think everybody's gonna be up against it. Um, there's really two primary suppliers of PVDF product in the United States, uh, Arkema and Soleil. Um, we're going to be able to continue to get that product. Um, and the idea is that we're going to be able to continue to get that at the level and maybe a little bit more than uh, we have historically. We're not anticipating just a, a windfall of us being able to have access to PVDF products. Uh, Sherwin's not gonna have some windfall of PVDF products to us. Um, they're really doing everything they can to source PVDF from all corners of the globe. Um, and, you know, we're not anticipating really any disruption in our business or in our business to our customers. So I guess just first and foremost, don't want to cause uh, a stir or cause any fear in the industry, but certainly want to be upfront with our customers on where things stay and, and will be in the industry, at least for the immediate future and well into 2022. Absolutely. And keep that in mind as you're watching this video about PVDF market updates. So today we're talking about PVDF and what that is, how the demand has shifted, what markets have made themselves available to PVDF now. Tell us what PVDF is and why that's important in the architectural metal world, first of all. Sure. PVDF is uh, short for polyvanillidine fluoride. Um, it's the high-end architectural coating that that is used predominantly in the commercial and higher end architectural residential metal roofing world, metal roof, metal flashing world. Why is it used? It's high strength, it's hard, doesn't scratch very easily. And the biggest thing of it is that it holds color integrity better than most other finishes out there, especially when you're talking about the common things out there being uh, SMP or siliconized modified polyester or just a straight polyester paint system. So it really is, you know, the best of the best as far as reasonably cost paint systems, which I think is a good lead into the next yeah. subject matter. I mean, I mean we're, we're sitting here in January of 2022, and there's something going on with PVDF. And what are we seeing now? What's happening in the market? Yeah, so I, I think there's some dominoes falling. What we're really seeing, and, and really what I think the paint world is seeing is there's new different expanded uses, and I can't even say it's new. PVDF has been a part of the battery manufacturing world for years, um, but Everyone is seeing the rise of EVs, electric vehicles. Everybody's seeing the rise of battery storage solutions, particularly for renewable energy systems, um, where renewable energy is traditionally, hey, if it doesn't get used, it's lost. So if you've got wind and you're generating electricity from it, if it doesn't get used, it's typically lost. So we're starting to see storage systems that say, okay, I might not, the, the grid or the system may not need that energy right now, but rather than let it go to waste, they're storing it in just these massive battery bank systems um, and tying them to the grid. This is helping a, a, a highly strained grid in the United States already as it is, you know, as well as across the, the entire world. So what we're seeing is just this, this product that's been around for 50 plus years and the market has steadily grown you know, 2% to 5% year in, year out, predominantly used as an architectural coating. And then you have this massive, massive market that's saying, gee, we really need to ramp this up. And the best product we need to use for it is this PVDF coating. That is one of the things that's causing strain on it. Um, a lot of the PVDF manufacturers are saying, oh yeah, hey, we'll continue to sell it to you, you know, to all the big box paint companies. Um, but you're gonna pay this much for it. So we're seeing massive, massive increases in PVDF prices. A lot of the EV or a lot of the battery manufacturers are willing to pay these prices. And they've been paying these higher prices. They're just, demand is through the roof right now, just the way the world is changing and, and really changing dramatically over the last three to five years. We'd be naive to say, oh, that's just gonna be a fad. That's just gonna be a trend. This is going to continue to grow 
as the price, the cost of energy continues to, to increase, as, as things that make the grid more efficient continue to increase, there's that PVDF that is a big solution for the battery manufacturing world uh, to have continued demand in the market. The fact that their demand is growing significantly, the fact that they're willing to pay more for it than the traditional historical architectural world, if, as a PVDF manufacturer, you know, you're, you're gonna go with whoever's gonna pay you more. So additionally, China has really been one of the big historical PVDF manufacturers exporting it to the United States for a number of the paint manufacturers, and they've really limited the supply that they're willing to export. Um, you know, for those that don't know it, China is one of the bigger EV manufacturers as well as battery manufacturers in the world as far as countries go. Um, you know, I think they're ahead of us on the curve as far as battery manufacturing goes um, and mass production of batteries go. So looking at it, they've squeezed off their supply and said, hey, we're going to use this for what we need to use it for in-house internally. That's made, you know, we could call it a shortage, but they're still making as much, if not more, than they were previously. It's just how much can we get our hands on in the United States to keep our historical market, architectural paint metal market going, which what's what do you have in common between EVs and battery manufacturing and metal roofing? You'd say nothing. You know, I can put a solar system on my roof. I don't know. It, it really is the same high-end, top-end technology used in metal roofing is the same technology used in battery manufacturing as well. So if I'm a metal roof manufacturer, contractor, installer, and I'm looking at this and I'm hearing about this, you know, what does that actually mean for my bottom line? What price increases am I seeing? How does that affect my daily purchases? Sure. I mean, we, we've seen price increases on our PVDF coated products probably upwards of about 60 to 70 percent from, we'll call it, 14, 15 months ago. What does it mean moving forward? Again, I, I always refer back to the uh, the metal market updates. Nobody has that crystal ball. So from about late 2020 to where we're at right now in early 2022, we've seen about a 50 to 60% increase in the cost of PVDF. What we're hearing is that the price of PVDF today could almost double in this calendar year. That is staggering. That is a really huge number. The alternative though would be an FEV type solution if PVDF doubles, FEVE is probably where things are going to end up in the market. FEVE is a great solution, great system, as good or better than PVDF. It's just priced out of the PVDF world. I don't know that that's going to be the case, but it very well could be the case. So if we're looking at the architectural metal market and we're seeing the PVDF price increases, you know, should we start looking for alternatives? What's the solution here? Again, PVDF is the high-end solution. I think there are some equal to, maybe even a little bit better alternatives to PVDF, um, one of them being FEVE. That is a really expensive high-end solution that's already available in the market, but it's traditionally uh, shied away from just from cost. I mean, the, it's as good or maybe a little bit better than PVDF, but it, it's at a price point where it's going to be really difficult for it to, to take over the market. Now, the FEVE, we're not anticipating that really having any shortages or issues in the market, but FEVE could get involved in the PVDF or the architectural metals world at a much greater clip if PVDF prices rise to or above that. And, and some of the things that paint manufacturers have already done is you know, you've got two coat and three coat systems. Traditionally, what is sold and bought is a two coat system, but we regularly get into a three coat system. That three coat is just a clear coat PVDF. We've already started to, to uh, migrate our three coat systems, that clear coat being an FEVE solution for uh, those three coat systems. You know, that's just something to, to offset that way high demand on the PVDF. It's already in a, the three coat system is already a very expensive solution, but as PVDF increases, it could have greater opportunity in the architectural metals world. And could you see something like that, recognizing the PVDF price increases and continuing that research and development to try to bring that price down over time and enter the architectural metal market more? You know, I don't know what's involved in the manufacturing of an FEVE type system. So it'd be tough to say, oh yeah, we can just mass produce FEVE and it's gonna be at a much less or much less expensive price point than PVDF. I'm sure if that was an option, that would have been explored. And, and you might be able to see some price relief from a volume standpoint, but to, to 
cut the price of FEVE in half to where kind of PVDF kind of is today. I don't know that that's a real solution. Where I do see the market kind of turning, converting, switching, going to an alternative really is an SMP type system. SMPs have come a long way. Is it as good as PVDF? No. And and I, any honest paint company would say no, but it is really good. It, it's great with scratch resistance. Um, it, it's really great in environment. You know, the biggest challenge or biggest issue, and you can't even really call it an issue because it's night and day from where it was 10 years ago, is the UV degradation. So if you've ever walked by a building and like brushed up against it and you got this white stuff on you, that's typically a polyester and SMP type paint system. And it's usually the, the UV breaking that down. That happens much faster with an SMP or a polyester system than it does with a PVDF system. That's why PVDF has dominated the architectural, high-end commercial architectural metal roof and metal wall world where SMPs haven't. SMPs have come a long way. Are they far enough along to where they're going to supplant PVDF as the, the top-end high solution because of what's going on in the world with PVDF? I don't know. I certainly think it's an alternative. You know, Sheffield, we do paint, uh, you know, some SMP. I do envision that SMP is become, going to become more and more popular. Um, you know, the cool thing about SMP is that we can do a lot of kind of ornate things with it where uh, we can do textured things, we can do things with the gloss, you know, but again, we can't do that longevity as far as chalk and fade go that you get with PVDF. So it's gonna really have to be the right solution but again, SMP is not a bad solution. And for the years on this channel, before any of this PVDF stuff came up, we never said SMP is bad. We've just said PVDF is where it's at. So if someone is looking at SMP as an alternative to PVDF, you know, what warranty differences do you see there? Yeah, so they, they both have that same 40-year film adhesion warranty, which, which is the primary driver behind everyone's warranty. When somebody says, I've got a 30-year, a 25-year, a 35, a 40-year, Whatever your warranty is, they are predominantly talking about that film adhesion. Sheffield, we've got a 40-year film adhesion on our PVDF products. We also have a 40-year uh, film adhesion warranty on our SMP products. So it's like, okay, well, why wouldn't I go with the one that's cheaper? It really is that chalk and fade that is involved in that warranty. The chalk and the fade on a PVDF is going to be uh, significantly better than an SMP right out of the gate, meaning your first year or two, as well as long term. So as soon as something gets out in UV, it starts to break down. You know, the SMP, you know, they both have that adhesion warranty, but really the difference is that chalk and the fade where the SMP will fade much faster over time than the PVDF. So as a contractor, you know, purchasing this architectural metal, what can you do about these escalating prices with PVDF? Yeah, we, we consistently tell our customers to put clauses, escalation clauses. You know, we're going to see increases with it. We're not sure that the metal prices, if, if they continue to go down, if that's going to be the offset between the rising paint prices. Um, so we strongly, strongly, strongly encourage, that I mentioned, we strongly encourage our customers to put escalation clauses in their contracts, whether it's residential or commercial, Put time limits on your contract. So if you put a bid out there, make it good for 30, 60, 90 days, whatever it might be, in addition to an escalation clause. So, you know, it doesn't always fly. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you can get it through every time. However, people need to be able to understand that you can't, I can bid you what it is today if you don't give me an answer for 180 days and you say, hey, it's yours. And you say, I can't make up that $2,000 difference. I can't make up that $8,000 difference in the material cost. So as a contractor, protect yourself. Also as a contractor, it's, it's give people alternatives. So you never want to mix and match an SMP and a PVDF, even if they match. I mean, a lot of our SMP and PVDF systems, they are matching. Our dark bronze and dark browns are the same. Even though it's the same color out of the box, it's, it's going to behave differently on the roof once, once that UV is hitting it. As a contractor, you may get some resistance saying, somebody saying, hey, it's just not a value for me to go with a PVDF system anymore. That's fine. At Sheffield Metals, we can give you that same 24 gauge. We can put an SMP on it. It doesn't impact the engineering. So if you need an engineered metal roofing system and you don't want to pay that, that increasing spread between PVDF and SMP, we can still offer you a system. We can give you a textured SMP. We can give you a matching SMP to the, the traditional 
PVDF color that we have. So we've got a lot of flexibility in it. Me personally, I'm still way in favor of the PVDF type systems. You know, I wouldn't go out and specify FEVE, but if the price of PVDF gets to that point, FEV is a totally valid alternative, as good or better. Not really worried about if the market starts to transition from PVDF to FEVE. Um, certainly, if the market does, we'll do our best to educate everybody and say, hey, here's what FEVE is, here's the difference between it, um, and here's everything that is good, better, best, indifferent from F SMP to poly to PVDF to FEVE. Thanks, Adam, for the information. We'll continue to keep you up to date on what's going on with PVDF and everything in the metal construction market going into 2022. Make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel to stay up to date. Comment down below with any questions. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.